My name is Casey Kupchak. I am the Public Information Coordinator for Hernando County Government. Um, I want to thank you for joining us today to celebrate the completion of this monument in honor of Hernando County's fallen in the global war on terrorism. I would like to start off this ceremony uh, with the presentation of colors by Marine Corps League um, 708 Color Guard and the singing of the national anthem by Ashley Dudek, a student at Springstead High School. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we the star lamely gleaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled Beautiful, Ashley. Thank you very much. And Detachment 708 Color Guard, thank you as well. I would also like to recognize and thank the families um, of the service members of Hernando County who are being honored by this monument today. Uh, thank you for being here to help us honor the um, those fallen service members for their sacrifice. Our first speaker today is Hernando County Commissioner Jeff Holcomb. He is the representative for District 4. Um, Commissioner Holcomb, if you would like to come on up and say a few words. Thank you, Casey. First, I want to thank Brent Lohman and the Lohman Foundation for uh, them bringing this idea to me. It was an absolute no-brainer to uh, get a monument dedicated for the global war on terrorism. So thank you, Lohmans. You know, when you think of the history of terrorism in this world, the global war on terrorism as it affected the United States, we really need to think back prior to 9-11. The Marine Corps barracks in 83, the World Trade Center in 1993. But I think the United States got involved with the downing of Flight 93 for those brave men and women on the plane who said, let's roll. No more planes are going to crash. And the, monuments and buildings in this country anymore. They were the first fighters in the global war on terrorism. You know, I think we've lived in a lap of luxury for a little while prior to the global war because of a large ocean, you know, countries in, uh, in peril over in the Middle East and various other places where there have been frequent terrorist strikes. But with the advent of cell phones, internet, the ability to fundraise through social media, that terrorism came to our shores. Their perspective is they hate Israel. They hate anyone who partners with Israel, and that's us. And they hate other countries who have a free lifestyle. They like to use civilian as assets, and they're not ashamed to kill or maim women, children, and very young folks who had nothing to do with any association with uh, armies or military, no matter where they are. After 9-11, I think we've been very, very blessed to bring the global war on terrorism to the fight to them. 
We can't think of very many large attacks in this country since then. There's been a few, but the best thing about my participation in the global war on terrorism has been that we bring the fight to them, and if anyone who wants to get radicalized or use that mentality against coalition forces or the United States, they do it overseas and not here at home. The global war on terrorism has been involved in operations in Iraqi freedom, enduring freedom, Operation Resolute Support, and Operation Inherent Resolve. And I'm very blessed to be a part of all those operations. But it's also been in Yemen, in the Horn of Africa, and a few other countries. Again, bringing the fight to them has kept our shores safe here at home. The terrorism mindset is a cowardly mindset. You think killing people, maiming women, children, innocents, is going to turn people to your mindset. They're all of a sudden going to put on a black robe, and now they're going to go out and kill people beside you. That never happens. It's not the way the world works, and it's never a way to get people to join your fight. We need to remember this country on September 12, 2001. That was when this country was together. No one's out for themselves trying to limit speech of other citizens. This country needs the most free speech that it can have, and we need to be the most independent and free country we can be, not shutting things down. That's not the way we were on 9-12, and that's not the way we need to treat our neighbors and our friends and our cohorts. In summary, very proud to dedicate this to the veterans of Hernando County, and honored to be a part of this process with the Loman Foundation. It honors sailors, soldiers, airmen, coasties, and marines. <laughs> but it also honors wives, husbands, fathers, brothers, sisters. Because when one goes off, there's many more that are left behind. And some have to deal with the results of that, um, that military member coming home. And if you're sending packages, if you're just being part of parades, all of that helps, all of that matters. So on behalf of the Loman Foundation in Hernando County, honor to be a part of this dedication. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Holcomb. Um, our next speaker today will be Brent Loman with the Loman Family Foundation. And Brent, if you'd like to come on up and say a few words as well. Thank you, Casey. Thank you, family, friends, and Hernando County residents for being here today. I'd like to specifically thank the uh, Board of County uh, Commissioners, other dignitaries, um, everyone involved today, uh, General uh, James Hartzell, and most importantly, to the families of the Marines and soldiers we're honoring here today, and all the veterans in attendance. It's a real honor for me to be here speaking to you today. I left active duty Marine. Sorry, it's a little low for me. I left active duty uh, Marine Corps serving as a captain in 2015, and I moved back home here to Hernando County. Uh, and actually, as I was sitting in this building here, uh, getting some taxes worked out as I just moved back to Florida, I looked at the wall and I noticed that the way we honored the five Hernando County uh, sons that were killed in Iraq and Afghanistan was a poster on the wall. And I remember thinking to myself that we could do better for this. These five men were my colleagues, my friends, my classmates. Now I remember thinking, we can do better. Hernando County has had a long and proud tradition of service uh, to our country, serving the Civil War, both World Wars, Korea, Vietnam, Desert Storm. Today is with the deepest respect that we gather here to honor the Marines and soldiers of the most recent conflicts in the War on Terror the men who made the ultimate sacrifice in service to their country and our freedom. With all the chaos and device, with all the chaos and divisiveness around the world and in the country today, please let this monument serve as a reminder that these men gave all they had to protect our freedoms and our way of life. Let this monument serve as a reminder that we are still fighting the war on terror, 
that these five men gave their lives in that war and that sons and daughters of Fernando County at this very moment are deployed around the world in harm's way across the globe. Let this monument serve as a reminder that service does not come without sacrifice. Sergeant Lee Robert Mills, Specialist Cody Grader, Staff Sergeant Michael Schaefer, Specialist Clarence Williams III, and Specialist Justin Coleman. These men gave their lives fighting for and defending our right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. May we never take these freedoms for granted, for so many have sacrificed so much. Today, I challenge all of us to never forget those that came before us and to raise up a new generation of individuals with the same sense of courage, fortitude, and spirit to serve our country and our fellow mankind. I'd like to thank uh, the members of the Lohman Family Foundation, uh, my parents, Matt and Beverly Lohman, my wonderful wife, Megan, and our soon-to-be-born first child, Abo, uh, my brother-in-law, Billy Laux, and my sister, Rachel Laux, and their son, Grant, and my brother, Blake Lohman, and his uh, fiance, Christy. I'd also like to thank, um, thank you. I'd also like to thank Scott Herring, the Director of Public Works and Accounting Engineer, Sam Burden, Craig Becker, and everybody else from Hernando County Facilities for helping us get this installed. Uh, Natalie Kaler from Brooksville Main Street, Casey Kupchak from Hernando County to, uh, for putting this on today, and Dave Harris and the Honor Guard and everyone over at Marine Corps League 708 for their participation today. And most importantly, I'd like to thank the men on this plaque and the Gold Star families here today and all the fat sacrifices that they've made for our nation. Thank you. He's a little bit taller than I am. <laughs> Thank you, Brent. We do appreciate your involvement in this monument's construction. Uh, next, we will have David Harris with Marine Corps League 708. Come on up and read a special poem entitled The Box. I personally heard this poem um, delivered by Dave, and it is ac absolutely beautiful. So, Dave, I'd like to invite you up to come on and say the poem. box. Once upon a time in the land of Hushabai, long about the wondrous days of yore, they came across a sort of box, all bound with chains and locked with locks, and labeled, kindly do not touch, it's war. A degree was issued round about, all with a flourish and a shout, and a gaily colored mascot tripping on before. Don't fiddle with this deadly box, or break the chains or pick the locks, and please don't ever mess about with war. Well, the children understood, children happen to be good and were just as good in those wondrous days of yore. They didn't try to pick the locks or break into that deadly box and never tried to play about with war. Mommies didn't either, sisters, aunts, and grannies neither, because they were quiet and sweet and pretty in those wondrous days of yore. Well, very much the same as now, but really not to blame somehow for opening up that deadly box of war. But someone did. Someone battered in the lid and spilled the contents out all across the floor. A sort of bouncy, bumpy ball 
made up of flags and guns and all the tears and the horror and the death that goes with war. It bounced right out and went bouncing all about, bumping into everything in store. And what was sad and most unfair was that it really didn't seem to care much who it bumped or why or what or for. It bumped the children mainly, and I'll tell you this quite plainly. It bumps them every day more and more. Leaves them dead and burned and crying. Thousands of them sick and dying. Because when it bumps, it's very, very sore. There is a way to stop the ball. It isn't very hard at all. All it takes is wisdom. And I'm absolutely sure. We could get it back into the box and bind the chains and lock the locks. But no one seems to want to save the children anymore. Well, that's the way it all appears because it's been bouncing around for years and years. In spite of all the wisdom whiz since those wondrous days of yore, when they came across that sort of box, all bound with chains and locked with locks, and labeled. Kindly do not touch. It's war. The flag of the United States of America represents a nation, a people, and an ideal. It is a symbol of freedom, patriotism, honor, and duty. This flag was designed to unify, not to be used as a banner of discontent. These colors are the same today as those which the colonists gained our independence and are the same as those that fly over brave, every brave man and woman who has unselfishly put their lives on the line around the world to protect the very rights and freedoms and privileges for which this nation was founded. The rights and freedoms we enjoy each and every day. For those who have served under these colors, the final honor is to have the flag of the United States of America folded as a final tribute to their service to country. There were 13 stars there were 13 stripes and there are 13 folds. Each acknowledging the dedication of those who serve, have served, and those who have gone on before. Here is an example of the 13 folds of honor of the flag of the United States of America. This flag of the United States of America is a living memorial to the thoughts of our comrades and the ones we have come to honor here today. This flag is their flag. The flag they loved. The flag they served. With the first fold we salute the 13 original colonies and the forefathers who founded this great nation. The second fold, we salute the men and women who died in the war for independence. The third fold, we salute those men and women who fell in the war of 1812 
to preserve our new freedoms. In the fourth fold, we salute the brave soldiers on both sides of the North and the South in our Civil War. In the fifth fold, we salute those who shed blood in the name of hope and freedom in the Great War, the First World War. In the sixth fold, we salute those who have gone on before us and died in the terrible battles of World War II, Pearl Harbor, Anzio, Midway, The Bulge, Iwo Jima, Guadalcanal, Normandy, and Berlin. In the seventh fold, we salute the men of the 1st Marine Division who in a rear guard action at the Chosun Reservoir in Korea saved their battalion and the lives of their brother Marines. In the eighth fold, we salute the brave men and women of our armed forces who died in the fields and the rice paddies of Vietnam. In the ninth fold, we salute those who lost their lives and suffered by the most horrific and unspeakable terror terrorist acts of September the 11th. The tenth fold, we salute our men and women who died, suffered in the hostile conditions of Iraq and Afghanistan. The eleventh fold, we salute God, our parents, and our families who we love and respect. The twelfth fold, we salute the men and women of our armed forces and the arsenal of democracy and the hammer of freedom. And the thirteenth fold, we salute, lastly, freedom, because without freedom there is no honor, and without honor we are not Americans. On end this we vow that as long as this flag flies, we will salute it. With the final fold, the stars are uppermost, reminding us of our national motto, in God we trust, and representing the armed forces of the United States of America and preserving for us the rights, privileges, and freedoms we enjoy each and every day as we live as citizens of the greatest nation in the history of the world. Thank you, uh, David Harris and uh, Detachment 708 for that uh, beautiful flag folding ceremony called um, the 13 Folds. Um, thank you uh, for coming today. And before we officially unveil the monument, um, I want to say a special thank you myself, jump on the thank you train, um, to our facility staff for assisting me with the setup today, as well as my video production assistant, John Cancel and for also uh, Shannon Werner for her help today um, for recording. Um, I'd like to thank Brent Lohman for his assistance with today's ceremony as well. And um, I would like to say one special thank you to Dave Harris for helping me and guiding me um, to have this make this ceremony so special. Uh, now the only thing left to do is come over here to my right hand side and officially unveil the monument. If